What I'd like to share with you today is the current prices of groceries in the malls here in the Philippines. Now the prices you're about to see, it's about 30 some items, are pictures that I took in the Dumaguete Robinson's uh, supermarket. Just so that you know, the conversion rate that I used was 48 pesos to the dollar. One other thing is, before we start looking at the actual prices, is that the grocery store at the mall is not your only option for groceries. The other option is to go to the Mercado. Now, every, every, every town has, even the smallest towns, has a Mercado. Now, the, the thing is with the Mercado is that some of them will list the prices, some will not. The ones that don't list the prices, you're better off having your Filipina girlfriend do the shopping. They tend to raise the price when they see that you're a foreigner. Now, the other thing is that at the Mercado, there's kind of like a list. It's probably a list of like maybe 50 items or less that you're, you're ever going to find at any of these Mercados. And it's the same basic fruits, vegetables, meats, which is the chicken, the fish, and the pork. And then you're going to have just miscellaneous items like garlic and, and seasonings and whatnot. Now, you're not going to have a very big variety of things to get at the Mercado, but for your rice and just basic staples to cook, it will be cheaper than going to the grocery stores at the mall. It will be cheaper. Now, I personally, what I do is I get all of my fruits and vegetables at the Mercado because the prices are cheaper. And as you're about to see, they're, they're quite a bit more at the, uh, at the grocery store. However, I get my meats at the, at the grocery store in the mall, just simply because they keep them refrigerated. And when you go to the Mercado, uh, other than the fish being, being on some ice, much of the chicken and beef and pork is, is not refrigerated. Now, the only upside to that is most of it was butchered that day. So, if, and it's butchered about five, six in the morning. So if you go early in the morning, you're getting really fresh meat and just take it straight to the fridge. So if you're willing to, again, people eat this meat every day. It's not like people are dying from this. But if, if you're of a sensitive nature or whatever with your, your immunity, you haven't really been to many foreign countries and whatnot, then I would suggest getting all your meat at the grocery store where it's at least refrigerated. So let's go ahead and we'll start up some uh, grocery music and we'll take a look at these prices. Now the first one here is Fuji apples. These are not really big apples. I mean, we're talking about maybe three inches in diameter. So at 35 pesos a piece, that comes to roughly 73 cents uh, each apple, which is, in my mind, kind of expensive, especially since in California, we can get apples that are even shipped in from Washington all the way down to Southern California. And we could get maybe for a dollar fifty the price of two apples uh, here in the Philippines. Uh, for a dollar fifty, we can get an entire bag of apples. You know, it's like maybe three pounds worth of apples. So uh, that's pretty much the going price, though, thirty-five pesos. If you go to the street in the mercados, you'll get these same exact apples eh, for about ten. I've seen them as low as ten pesos, but they weren't really all that sweet. Uh, and generally even about 15, 20 pesos. Now here we've got, uh, again, the same exact apples except they have packaged them into little six packs. And 210 pesos works out to about $4.37. Here we have the same exact price for oranges. 210 pesos for six oranges. Again, these are not really big. These are not like the big Northern California oranges that are big as a grapefruit. Uh, these are more like three inches across in diameter. And that's uh, $4.37 for six oranges. Over here we got eggs, 73 and a half pesos. Uh, that works out to $1.53 for one dozen eggs. And that's that to me is a reasonable price. I the last time I bought eggs, which was quite a while ago in California, I think it was basically about the same price. Here we have bread. Now, when it comes to bread, the bread you see here, the high fiber whole wheat bread, that's about the only bread I really like. 
They do have many other options, uh, mostly white bread, but what you'll find is that you're not going to get truly white bread that doesn't have sugar in it. For whatever reason, I guess they just love having sugar in the white bread, and it, it tastes kind of bizarre to me. Um, maybe you'll like it, I don't know. I mean, plenty of people here buy it. But um, to me, it's... And then the other bread, the white bread, which is, uh, again, kind of sugary sweet, it's a little less expensive. But I'd rather just pay the 150 for the high-fiber wheat bread and call it a day. Now, milk, there's very little actual, what I consider cow milk. Milk that was just yanked out of the cow, put into a big homogenizing vat, strained, pasteurized, and then put into a container. That type of milk, there's very little of it. I hardly ever see it. Now they do have milk, which is real milk, that is, they treat it with irradiation, and then they seal it in cardboard boxes, and that's about as close as you're going to get. It's, it's real milk, it's not soy milk, but it doesn't need to be refrigerated until you open it. So that, that's mostly what you're going to see, is either the boxed, irradiated milk, or you'll see the powdered milk and soy milk. Uh, what we got here is a container of powdered milk drink. Uh, they have it both in chocolate and, you know, there's, this one is Nestle. There's another company called Alaska. And it's, it's kind of expensive considering the, the local earning rate. Try and keep in mind with these prices that many people that have jobs only make roughly about uh, three to four hundred pesos a day. So what you're looking at here at 218 pesos is about half a day's wage for a lot of people. This particular package of powdered milk drink uh, comes out to four dollars and fifty four cents. This is the other brand that I mentioned. The um, Alaska and that one is uh, 271 pesos so it works out to about five five dollars uh, for for the same package it's just a different brand is what it is here we have uh, longanisa now longanisa is just one of my favorites um, it, it you know it's if you like uh, say sweet Italian sausage uh, then you'll like longanisa I like I like it though now they're nine pesos a piece Eh, which doesn't really sound like much. I mean, it, it converts to 19 cents each, so you get a 10-pack for $1.90, which is pretty reasonable. I believe Farmer John sausages there in the United States go for much more than that. But, uh, or not much more, but a little bit more than buck ninety. So, uh, I would say that the price is comparable here. It's, it's nothing outrageous, but I like Longanisa. But just to warn you, it is a little bit sweet, so, you know, just so you know. Now, when you come here, there's just a wide variety of hot dogs. They have entire hot dog sections. This is sort of the deli section of hot dogs, where you just get some tongs and pick them up yourself. These go for 25 cents each, the ones that are 12 pesos. So to get a 10-pack is $2.50. Now, I've seen at different grocery stores up to two, and we're talking about each side, so really it's four aisles of just frozen hot dogs. It's just, I guess, there's just a huge market here for taking leftover meat and turning it into hot dogs. There's just a huge, huge variety. I mean, you've got everything you can see here. There's ham and cheese hot dogs, uh, cheesy beef steak hot dogs, just different, different little varieties. To me, they all taste the same. Now, the two classifications you're going to find these hot dogs in I tend to get these ones which are at the, the deli, because if you notice, they're sort of a natural color. Many of the hot dogs here are wrapped in red plastic. Every individual hot dog is wrapped in red plastic. And when you peel it, it's still bright red, as red as the uh, placards that you see here in the picture. It's a bright, bright red. It's not a natural color at all. It's just red dye number five. And when you take those hot dogs that are bright red and you break them in half, you realize that basically they've been soaked in red food dye. Because when you break them in half, there's about a one eighth inch saturation of the red dye and on and the actual color of the meat on the the center is kind of a gray color. 
So if that doesn't bother you, uh, if you're going to cook it really well or whatever, then just so you know, there's those two types of hot dogs. The ones that are soaked in the red food dye, and then these ones which don't have the red dye on them. So I personally prefer these ones which don't, don't sit around soaked in the red food dye. Here we have shrimp, and I, I believe a lot of the shrimp comes from uh, Vietnam. Vietnam is like a huge exporter of shrimp. But who knows, these could be uh, semi-local, at least here to the Philippines. But uh, the going price is 480 pesos per kilo, and that works out to roughly $10 a kilo in American dollars. And that breaks down to about $5 a pound. Now, I rarely buy beef here in the Philippines. Um, I, I just, I just, it's just a personal thing. I would rather just get really good chicken or really good seafood rather than uh, what I just consider. I mean, most of the beef here, since there are no big cattle ranches in the Philippines, most of the beef is actually uh, frozen and brought in from either Australia. Now, we're talking about good beef is brought in from Australia or United States or even, um, well, I don't know that really much comes from Japan. But United States and Australia definitely are some of the bigger importers of good beef. Now, then there's a lot of other beef available that generally, if, if the price is low, don't expect a whole lot of quality out of it. Right here, we're looking at 374 pesos per kilo, which works out to 779 per kilo in U.S. dollars. And that works out to uh, $3.90 per pound. So again, you can see how the 374 pesos per kilo uh, ballpark comes out to $3.90 per pound. So it's kind of an easy, easy way to figure that out. Now here we have pork. Uh, even though I'm not a big fan of pork, I find myself eating more pork as a substitute for beef. I do try to trim it and, uh, and all that, but here we've got pork chops. I usually make pork, breaded pork chops. I'm a big fan of that. These go for two, 217 pesos per kilo, which works out to 226 per pound, or $4.52 per kilo. Now here we have ground beef at 331 pesos per kilo, and again, that works out to about $3.44 a pound. Now the thing with the uh, the ground beef here is, and I've, I've gotten this from a lot of expats and I've experienced myself, it tends to run a little on the dry side. I don't know why, it just doesn't seem, maybe it's because there's just not a lot of fat in it. Maybe the cows that they're making this from just don't have much fat on them. I don't know what the deal is. But to get around that, what I've done is I'll take, when I mix to make, say for instance, hamburgers or meatloaf, is I'll take, say, for every one pound of beef hamburger, I will hand blend it with one pound of pork hamburger, which does have fat. And that gives it a bit of taste, and of course you add in your salt and your pepper and your seasonings and whatever you like to put in it. Now here's my personal favorite when it comes to meat, is chicken. I, I tend to buy a lot of chicken. I probably eat three times my body weight in chicken every year. I'm just a really big fan of chicken. It's lean. There's so many different ways to cook it. You can use it for soups. You can you can fry it. You can barbecue it. You can do a million things, uh, a million different ways to cook chicken. Now here we've got it at 148 pesos per kilo, which works out to about a dollar fifty-four per pound, three dollars per kilo. I tend to get the at least like for instance, if I'm shopping for a week, I'll get at least five of the biggest chicken breasts, which you see here. It only takes a moment, I even have a little video on it, but it only takes a moment to debone these. You, you don't even need a knife or anything. You just take your two thumbs and you can debone it and, and pull away the, the bones in a couple of seconds. And then you can you know, use whatever recipe you'd like. You can just get nothing but drumsticks or nothing but wings or nothing but even uh, the backs to use for soup. Here you see just the uh, chicken drumsticks. 168 pesos works out to about $1.75 per pound. And I, I don't know, I haven't been shopping in the United States recently, but it seems like a fair price. Uh, works out to $3.50 per kilo in U.S. dollars. Now, if you want to buy a whole chicken, because you plan on roasting it or whatever, you just want to have a whole chicken, uh, those are going for 140 pesos per kilo, which works out to about uh, $1.46 per pound in U.S. dollars. And then bathroom tissue. 
Um, here we've got three ply, a 12 pack for three dollars and sixty four cents. If you really feel that you need off to deal with the mosquitoes, you can get that. Uh, let's see, a bottle which is roughly three fluid ounces goes for two dollars and eighty one cents. Now here, these are, keep in mind, all of this was imported from Gillette from the United States and if you really want a really good shaver such as say for instance the different Gillette models you see here then you're looking at anywhere from fifteen dollars for a four pack to nine dollars for a five pack and then there's one here on the bottom for like six dollars I think that's also for a two pack don't freak out not everything not all the razors are this expensive if that's just more than you want to spend on a razor there are these ones by Gillette which go for 50 cents each, 24 pesos. Here we have toothpaste and we're looking at eh, $2 a tube so not much different really than the United States. Listerine or any other kind of antibacterial mouthwash is expensive here. Maybe it's expensive everywhere but definitely it's a little bit expensive here. For a 25 fluid ounce bottle it comes to five dollars and ninety four cents when it comes to fruit juices there's the name brands and then I'll show you here in a moment the sort of local brands that they have and they're not really local it's just they're sort of imported from uh, different places uh, from Vietnam and other places it works out to seven dollars and twenty seven cents in American dollars here we have the other juice. Uh, this one's called Happy Day. Usually it's not a pure juice. Like for instance, this one says cranberry, but when you actually read the ingredients, it'll be a mixture of mostly cranberry, and then it'll have either grape juice or apple juice. A lot of them use grape juice or apple juice as kind of a filler. Um, but this goes for 120 pesos for one liter, and that works out to $2.50 American. Peanut butter. Uh, this is a 16 ounce jar and goes for $4.96. To me that seems a little expensive for such a small jar. I don't know, maybe maybe peanut butter's gone up uh, there in the United States, I don't know. But uh, yeah, about $4.96 for a 16 ounce jar, which is 238 pesos. And then for 151 pesos, you can make the rest of your sandwich. And we got, uh, now this is for smuckers. This is for the, again, the an imported item. You can get uh, less expensive jellies, you know, that are cl made closer to here or imported from China and stuff. But just so that you know, if you wanted to get smuckers, yeah, it's about 276, and it's not a really big jar. It's, it's a 12 ounce jar. To kind of put that in perspective, a can of Coke is I believe 16 ounces and booze let's see I did a more detailed video on on the cost of different types of booze uh, when I was there back in Bohol on this particular day I just checked out two I just checked out basically the local brandy which is Emperor that's like the the big brand here this one here the Emperor brandy uh, this one's going for a dollar eighty five for a 750 ml bottle that's 25 ounces and that's at 89 pesos. For Carlo Rossi wine, uh, you're looking at 235 pesos, which works out to about $4.90, uh, again, for a 25 uh, fluid ounce bottle. That's your standard, you know, pretty much standard size wine bottle. This is an average bag of potato chips. I wasn't able to get the exact ounces out of the picture, but it's basically just your average size uh, party bag of potato chips and that goes for two dollars and sixty cents. Toblerone is one of the nicer chocolates around. Uh, just about every grocery store here has it. You've got uh, three choices when it comes to chocolate. You've got, say for instance, Toblerone, which is uh, imported, but not that expensive. You have American chocolates, which to me are just expensive. Um, like for instance, even a, an American, say, Snickers bar, you'll pay nearly a dollar uh, just for a, a Snickers bar. Now the other third option are the Chinese imported candy bars which so far I just have not found them to be sweet. They, they're not, to me, I just don't really care for them. 
They just they're just not sweet enough chocolate. There is one called Choco Mucho, and those ones only go for about oh about not even 16 pesos. So we're talking like 30 cents for a pretty decent candy bar. Those are the Choco Muchos. Now the Toberoni, three and a half ounces goes for $2. Um, again, I, I like it. Uh, Toblerone is actually a pretty pretty decent chocolate. Here we have the Snickers bars. As I mentioned, um, these these are a little bit more expensive. We're talking eh, $2, almost $1.90 for a three-pack. So that works out to about, what, $0.65 cents each. Again, maybe I'm just thinking back too far. I just remember you could just go and $0.25, $0.30, cents, grab yourself a Snickers bar. But I guess those days are long gone. So, 91 pesos for a three pack works out to a dollar ninety for a three pack. Here we have Del Monte, a major brand imported uh, fruit cocktail, and eh, not bad, not a bad price. Uh, 69 and a half pesos works out to a dollar forty five. This is like your basic average uh, four inch wide can of uh, you know maybe five inches tall of fruit cocktail and the price is about the same for pineapple here we have Kellogg's Corn Flakes here in the Philippines there's, I've not really seen a big wide variety of cold cereal they do have it there, there are different brands available but not like an entire aisle like you see in the United States of 30 different types of cereal, you know, four kinds of Captain Crunch and that sort of nonsense. Here, it's, it's kind of a smaller uh, selection. And what you're looking at here is 185 pesos for a 17 and a half ounce box, uh, which works out to about $3.85. Here we have Lipton Yellow uh, Tea, which is what I use for making sun tea. I'll make either sun tea or I'll make ginger tea. I slice up ginger root and I put in some hot water and sugar and then I chill it. Actually, I've been doing the ginger tea more than the Lipton, but I was getting Lipton like all year. I, I also like the sun tea. And for a box of 50 bags, works out to 325, which is to me a pretty good deal. Uh, that's 156 pesos, works out to 325 in U.S. dollars. So I hope that gives you an idea of what groceries go for. Now, again, these are at the grocery stores in the malls. Most of the major supermarkets are located inside the mall. If you want to get cheaper prices, you can go to the Mercados. Again, if the prices are not listed for apples and fish and whatever, best thing is to send. Just give the money to your Filipina girlfriend, let her do it, and you're going to save yourself about 20 to 40 percent. But at the Mercado, there's really a, a limit. You're not going to find peanut butter at the Mercado. You're not going to find a lot of things at the Mercado because essentially the Mercado is, is going to cover stuff, again, like just basically fruits, vegetables, seafood, chicken, pork, and then just odd things like chili and MSG and just little odd items like that. Not a lot of wide variety at the Mercado, but the prices are cheaper. So you can do the two. You can get your fruits and vegetables from the Mercado, and then you can get your other imported items at the major supermarket. So I hope that gives you a pretty decent idea. And if you want to, in the comments section, again, these prices are for Dumaguete. If you're getting better or higher prices in another island at the, at the grocery stores, uh, go ahead and share that for comparison. Um, it would be interesting to see just uh, what, what the price range difference is between Dumaguete and, say, Iloilo or Cebu. All right, so I'll talk to you guys later, and we'll cover something else. See you then. Bye-bye.